assurance that He will go with us and He will fight for us and give us victory over our enemies. Amen. Hallelujah. We can have this assurance, this confidence that in the name of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. That's why we can sing a song of praise, a song of victory. We can all raise a hallelujah.
Ayan. Kamusta na po kayo? May hinihintay po ba kayo? Hinihintay niyo po ba si Patrick? <laughs> Ang ating bagyo. <laughs> ano pangalan ng bagyo? Meron na pong Patrick dito. Nauna na po. Ayan. So, purihin ng Panginoon. We're waiting for one person only. And that is Jesus. Maaari po ba na anayahan ng bawat isa na pumikit lamang po sandali and just like um, a deer pants for streams of water, living water. Let us long for the Lord and let us long for His touch. Let us wait upon Him, not with anything that we pray for, not with anyone that we are longing for, but only God and His work and His will to happen in our lives. Maari po ba na tayo ay sandali na lumapit sa Panginoon ang may pagsamba at pagsamo sa Kanya. Hallelujah, God, we are here. And we believe you are here. For you said in your word, for we're two or three gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And we tremble in your holiness, in your power and greatness. Lord, that you come and you dwell among us. Lord, kahabagan mo po ang bawat isa sa amin and this church. We cannot go far from here. We cannot move from here apart from you unless your glory is with us. Samahan mo kami. Holy Spirit, create in us deep hunger for your word. Deep thirst for your presence and fill us up fill us up lord fill us up with your encouragement with your strength with your power and your hope and your love salamat panginoon may we see your glory alone jesus this is our worship and prayer in your name alone amen and amen isang malakas na palakpak po sa panginoon hallelujah praise god uh, ngayon pong araw na ito is uh, September 25, 2022. Sabi po ni Pastor Al, break daw po muna tayo from Genesis series. Sige po, huminga po tayo ng malalim. Alright? You've been with us hanggang chapter 36. No? Tama ba? 37. So, popos po muna tayo for a while. Break daw po muna. And then sabi niya sa akin, um, You, you share free topic. Ayon. <laughs> so, libre daw ang topic ngayon. So, sabi ko, ah, break from Genesis and free topic. O, sige, let's talk about break free. <laughs> Ayan. And to break free, we must be strong in the Lord. Amen? Uh, sabihin niyo po sa kaliwa at kanan ninyo, be strong in the Lord. Lakasan po natin, be strong in the Lord. Yan. And this is the title of today's message, Be Strong in the Lord. Sino po dito ang Christian? Hindi lamang sa pangalan, kundi sa inyo pong status bilang tagasunod ng Panginoon. We are all Christians. We are believers of Jesus. We believe that Jesus loved us and He saved us. And uh, He is with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? But, half lang po iyon. Kasi sabi dito, if we are truly Christians, then we are in a spiritual battle today. Yan. Meron daw po tayong pakikipaglaban. Tignan niyo po ulit ang inyong katabi sa kaliwa at kanan. Yan po ay hindi natin kalaban. All right. But we are in a battle. We are in a battle and, and sometimes or a lot of times no po, I, we get defeated or hostage by this enemy called Satan. Sabi po ni Pedro or Pedro Ocoro, spiritual warfare is very real. There is a furious, fierce and ferocious battle raging in the realm of the spirit between the forces of God and the forces of evil. 
warfare happens every day, all the time. Whether you believe it or not, you are in a battlefield. You are in warfare. Mayroon daw po tayong pakikipaglaban, isang mapusok, isang balakas, at talagang nakakagimbal na gyera between us, God's people, and the forces of evil. And this battle is not conditional and it is not uh, seasonal. Sabi dito, it happens every day, all the time. And today is a time of battle. Madiwala po tayo sa hindi, tayo po ay nasa battlefield. You are in warfare. That's why ang problema po natin bilang mga tagasunod ng Panginoong Jesus, hindi lang natin alam na po na tayo pala ay nasa gyera, nasa ta- tayo pala ay nasa pakikipaglaban, at higit sa lahat, hindi natin alam kung sino ang ating kalaban, ano ang kanyang tactics, at ano ang kanyang mga plano para wasakin tayo. Gayun din naman, ang isa sa mga problema po natin ay hindi tayo nagpapasanay, hindi tayo nagpapa-equip, hindi tayo sumusunod sa Panginoon so that we can overcome the enemy. Alam niyo po sa Biblia, here in the scripture, Satan and his emissaries, na po, lahat ng kanyang kasama, lahat ng mga demonyo, lahat ng kanyang kampon ay active, buhay, devious, talaga pong maalab, hindi lang youth sa crossroad ang maalab, kung hindi pati ang mga jablo at ang mga demonyo ay maalab sa kanila pong pagsira sa ating lahat. Wala pong ibang gusto ang kalaban o si satanas kung hindi tayo ay paghiwahiwalayin sa ating pamilya. Paghinain ng ating mga conviction, paghinain ng ating mga tuhod, Sirain ang iglesia at paghiwahiwalayin tayong lahat. Wasakin at patumbahin ang integridad ng mga leaders and pastors. At higit sa lahat, Satan and his emissaries no po, plan to put us powerless in the ministry. Yun po ang pinakamatindi ngayon. Lahat tayo ay panghihinain niya at panghihinaan ng loob Paparamdam niya sa atin that we are powerless and we are useless in the ministry. Sabi po ni General Dwight Eisenhower, War is a terrible thing, but if you're going to get into it, you've got to get into it all the way. Kung tayo daw po ay papasok sa gera, pumaroon tayo. At dumuon tayo, hanggang sa katapusan ng lahat ng ito. Marami po sa atin ang talunan. Marami po sa atin ang feeling defeated dahil ang buhay po natin ay hindi po talaga nakapasok sa katotohanan at kaisipan na talagang tayo nga po ay nasa pakikipaglaban. The saddest symptom about so many cold Christians today ay yung pong tinatawag na kawalan ng paningin o kawalan ng pagpapahalaga o pagkilala na tayo nga po ay mayroong pakikipagdigma o pakikipaglaban sa buhay bilang isang kristyano. Marahil po pupunta po tayo dito sa church, may bagyo o wala, may baha o wala. We go through the motions of attending religious services like here in Crossworld each Sunday. We go through our live group every week. We go to our ministries to dance, to praise them, to ashery, to many other ministries. Pero wala po tayong pagkilala, pagdama na ang pinupuntahan po natin ay ang spiritual battle. Kaya po tayo ay nagiging talunan o nagiging feeling talo. Tayo po ay nado sa tono. Kanina po ay may mga tono dito ng, ng keyboard, ng guitar, ng drums. And somehow, ang buhay natin bilang kresyano ay sumusunod din tayo sa tunog o yugyog ng mga awitan. 
ano bi po, sabi nga dito, when, when we hear the sound of the church, when we hear the sound of the praise and worship, when we hear the singing no po in the church, para bang tila yata, iniimbita tayo dito po sa pagpupulong at pagsasama natin na parang sinasabi, let us come to that place. Why? Because Jesus is there and He's gonna solve our problems. He will give us peace and joy. He will give me a happy family life. Tara na, punta na tayo sa church. Maraming blessing doon. At ang pagpapala niya ay sumasagana sa ating lahat. Yes, that's true. But that's half truth. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, let us be aware. Yes, He promised us abundant life. Pero gayon din naman, tayo po'y isinugo ng Diyos parang mga tupa doon sa mga lobo. Yes, He promises us peace and He gives us peace. Pero po tayo ay nasa kitna ng tribulasyon. Paghihirap, sakit, sakuna, aksidente, kamatayan. Yes, God gives us love and because He is the God of love. Pero bakit nga ba sa pagsunod mo sa Panginoon, sa tono ng pagmamahal mo sa Kanya, doon ka napapersecute. Doon ka minamaliit at doon ka nare-reject. Yes, we have a sense of home here in the church. We have a shelter. We have a community. But again, we are in a warfare. We need to survive. We need to overcome. And therefore, God is drafting us to His army. God is sending us to His army so that daily, Araw-araw, as we engage in every battle Satan is throwing against us, we can overcome him for it is possible. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. We can overcome the devil. Only we need to know that we are in the battle. Marami din po mga pastor, ang umayaw na, umurong na, tumalikod na. Many pastors run away. No po? Nagtakpuhan na pa talilis. No po, hindi advancing the kingdom, kundi retreating from the kingdom. Why? Akala nila pagka nagpastor ka, no, ay masarap ang buhay. Pero pagka naranasan na nila, na yung pala pagka pastor ka, ang dami palang conflict, ang dami palang personal attacks, ang dami palang rejection, ang dami palang pakikipag-away sa loob ng church. Maraming siraan, maraming discouragement. Therefore, these pastors run away from the battle. These pastors and leaders, kasama kami doon, a lot of times, we don't understand no po, bakit nga ba, when God blesses a work, the enemy will increase the attacks against it. Damang dama ko po yan. <laughs> Sa loob ng 30 plus years in the ministry, pagka nandun ka na sa punto na, wow, souls are being won to the Lord. Wow, there are so many leaders rising up to say, yes, I want to be a life group leader. I will serve the Lord. I will do the ministry. Pero grabe po, sa kabila po nun, para kaming sinasampal at binubugbog ni Satanas. Why? Internal problems become to arise or arise in this church. Isa isa na babagsak ka na mga leaders and staff. Temptation here, temptation there. There's moral failure around us. Kaya po ang sabi ni Paul sa First Corinthians sixteen nine. Sabi niya din describe niya ang ang kanyang ministerio. Ang sabi niya for a wide door. For effective services open to me, and there are many adversaries. Nakikita niyo po ba yon? To all the mentors here, to all the live group leaders, to all the pastors, kita natin ang harvest field. Kita natin ang outreaches. Kita natin ang potential ng advancement ng God's kingdom. Pero ang sabi ni Paul, gayon din naman nakikita ko ang sangkater bang kalaban. He did not say, but there are many adversaries. Ang sinabi niya, and there are many adversaries. 
Ibig sabihin nun, yes, there is an open door or there are many open doors in the ministry and there are many adversaries too. Ministry is not a walk in the park. Being Christian is not a work in, walk in the park. Being a Christian or a follower, a disciple of Jesus is a battle. It's a daily warfare. That's why Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 20 remind us of what we should do each day. Who should we be each day? Anong profile natin? Anong katangian? Anong, anong, anong taglay natin sa bawat araw? Sabi po niya dito, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Tumayo po tayong lahat. Let us read the word of God with conviction and overcoming the devil as we read this word. Ready? Let us all together read verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, make up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth, boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Father, be with us. Holy Spirit, empower us only by the grace of Jesus for your glory alone in your name. Amen and amen. We can now take our seats. Finally. Everybody say with me, finally. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Finally, sa katapusan ng lahat, sa lahat ng ito. Finally, meanings for the rest. And this shows na po, kung titignan natin, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, sinabi niya, finally, dahil ito ay katugon ng Ephesians chapter 1 to 5. Ephesians chapter 1 to 3, binabanggit po dito ang ating glorious position in Christ. Wow! Nauna na po tayong binigyan ng paglalarawan ni Apostol Pablo na ang buhay natin dito ay paglalakbay lamang. And when we arrive there in the presence of Christ, wow, we are glorious in Him. We have this glorious position in Christ. And then chapters 4 to 6, 1 to 9, binigay naman po sa atin dito ang liwanag, ang tanglaw na lalakaran po natin. So sabi niya, dahil ikaw ay papunta doon sa destiny na glorious, hindi naman ito madali. Kaya kailangan mo ng tanglaw. So you have a destiny, you have the destination, pupunta ka doon, Therefore, yun ang, 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 ang iyong uh, direction, ang iyong de uh, destination, you need a pathway. At ang pathway na po na yun ay nasa chapters 4, 5, 6, 1 to 9. At ang pathway po na to na yun ay yung worthy of your walk in Christ. Yung paglakad mo ng karapat-dapat at katanggap-tanggap sa Panginoon. Tinapos na ng Panginoong Jesus ang laban 
sa krus ng Kalbaryo. And it is all possible for us to reach our destiny. And how could we take that walk? Walk in the worthiness of His power. Yung bagay sa'yo, bagay sa yung tawagin na Christian ka, that's your Christian walk. Yun po yung pinabanggit sa chapter 4, 5, and 6. And then, dumating po dito sa conclusion na sinasabi dito, kaya nga, kung magkagayon, datapuan, eto na. Dahil may glorious destination ka, at yung direction mo should be worthy of your calling as a Christian, therefore, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Tatlong bahagi po ng ating strength na makikita dito sa Panginoon. Uh, sabi dito, be strong in the Lord. Hindi niya sinasabi dito, be strong. Magpakalakas ka lang. Hindi niya sinasabi, naku, umiiyak ka, nade-depress ka, na-anxious ka. Uh, uh, lilipas din yan, pray ka lang. Maging malakas ka. No, ang sabi niya dito, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Sa Panginoon ang kalakasan. Dahil wala tayong sariling lakas. Be strong in the Lord. Lumagay ka sa, sit- sa sisidla ng Panginoon. Parang kumbaga sa, sa bata, papalikuan mo siya, no? Uh, favorite uh, job ko po as, as a mom. <laughs> Siguro that's the most exciting part ay yung paliguan ng mga sanggol. Yan. Gustong-gusto ko po yun, though very fragile po yun, you know. Pero paano mo ba paliliguan ng sanggol? Hindi mo naman siya pwedeng ilagay dito tapos tatabuan mo ng ganon or itatapat mo sa shower, di ba? Ilalagay mo siya dun sa baby bathtub. Ayan. Kapag ang anak mo yung lalaki, blue. No? May ganon eh. Pink. Alright. So, di ba ilalagay mo siya doon and then tsaka mo siya papaliguan. Exciting po yung part na yan sa motherhood. That's how I see being strong in the Lord. We are like these babies. No, wala tayong sarili kakayanan ng lakas unless we come to the presence of the Lord. At ang sabi po dito in Ephesians chapter 1, 19 to 20, the surpassing greatness of His power toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of His might, which He brought about in Christ. When He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places. That's the strength of the Lord. Yung bumuhay kay Jesus mula sa mga patay. That's the surpassing greatness of His power. Kaya saan ka pa? Ilagay mo ang buhay mo sa pinakamakapangyarihang Diyos at walang iba kung hindi ang Panginoong Yesus. Ephesians 3.16, inilarawan ng strength na ito, sabi doon, Paul prayed that God would grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in the inner man. Alam niyo po, ang pagpapalakas ng Panginoon sa atin ay doon sa mula kalooban po natin. From the inside out. That's the inner strength coming from the Lord. Remember David? Si David po, he was a mighty man. Talaga pong ang galing ni David. At uh, kung lalakbayin po natin ang kanyang buhay at aaralin po natin, wow, talaga pong napakatapang at napakalakas po ni David. Subalit isang araw, na po, siya'y nalugmok, siya'y na-depress, Siya po ay na-disappoint. Siya po ay nag-isa. He felt abandonment and rejection and talaga pong discouraged all his life dahil natalo po sila sa isang battle na po at yung pong kanila pag-uwi po nila ay yung pong kanilang kanilang uh, lugar na po ay kinubkob ng kalaban at uh, sinunog ang buong tribo, ang buong land po nila and then kinuha po ang mga babae at ang mga anak. So, ginawa po ng mga soldiers na kasama ni David, sinisi po siya. Sinisi po si David, talaga po ibinalik sa kanya ang lahat ng galit dahil po, syempre, nawalan ka, lahat po, sila, lahat po ng babae at lahat ng mga anak ay kinuha ng mga kaaway. David was found all alone by himself and he was crying. You see, 
the mighty man of God, all of a sudden, na po talagang halos batuhin siya ng mga tao, he was dejected and rejected by his own people. Pero ang sabi po dito, in 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Ito po ang ating paniyaya ngayon, na somehow you feel depressed and disappointed, or takot kayo sa buhay, takbuhin ang iyong future, bakit nga ba? Because you are fighting all by yourself. You are receiving all the blows of Satan all by yourself. Where in fact, we have God who is so strong, who can help you. And David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Thus the Lord graciously directed David. Grabe po, nung sinabi ni David, Lord, you're my strength. You are my fortress. You are my rock. Alam niyo po, that same moment, that same moment, the Lord graciously breathed upon David strength upon strength. Hinahanap po niya yung mga kumuha, na yung mga raiders, at talaga pong hinabol po nila. And they were able to recover their families and everything they have. Thus, the strength of the Lord is also available for all of us. May ninakaw ba si Satanas sa'yo? Mayroon ba siyang kinuha sa'yo? And he's, he's far away, and it's far away from you, and alam mo, para sa'yo yon. And Satan took it away from you. Ano ginagawa natin? Hinahabol natin si Satanas. So, hinahabol mo si Satanas, sa likod mo, nandun yung mga demonyo, tumutulak sa'yo, pababa. Kaya, we can see here, when we find our strength in the Lord, sabi dito, then we can have it back. Ang sarap ng may Panginoon. Ang sarap ng may relasyon sa Diyos. Ang lakas, ang tibay, ng buhay ay nakasalalay sa kung gaanong lahat ng sayo ay nakaangkla sa malakas na Diyos. David found strength in the Lord. Not only be strong in the Lord, ang sabi dito, no, to be strong in the Lord is to recognize that all His power, all the strength comes only from Him. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ang lakas ng Panginoon ay hindi po available lamang sa mga may kaya o may talino. Ang lakas ng Diyos ay hindi nangyayari sa tuwing ikaw ay malakas lamang manalangin ng iyong tinig lamang. Sabi dito, it is the gift of God. It is God who gives us the power, the grace to carry on. Kaya sabi dito that no one may boast. Pantay-pantay po tayong lahat sa Panginoon. And what only gives us distinction is how we anchor our lives upon His grace. To be in the Lord means that you have been saved by His grace. Tinanggap mo siya at kinikilala mo siya, Panginoong Jesus, ikaw ang aking Panginoon at tagapagligtas, wala nang iba. In Christ alone, in Him alone. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. In His mighty power. So sabi doon, ilagay mong buhay mo sa Panginoon, magpakalakas ka sa Diyos. Bakit? Because God has His might, has His power. Ang sabi nga po, ito ay patuloy at dapat araw-araw po nating nararanasan. We cannot truly, completely na po, trust the Lord kung wala naman po talaga tayong tamang relasyon po sa Kanya. Sabi po ni Spurgeon, we must see that we are convicted and condemned with a rope around our neck 
before we will weep for joy when Christ pardons us. Paulit-ulit ko po itong binabasa. And uh, totoo nga naman. Para bang minsan, pagka tinanggap mo ng Panginoong Jesus, bilang Panginoon na tagapagligtas, parang you're so much grateful and thankful sa Kanya, right? Sobrang pasasalamat po tayo sa Panginoon. Kaya lang nakakalimutan natin saan tayo nang galing. Bakit nga ba dumating si Jesus? Bakit nga ba binigay ng Diyos ang kanyang buhay sa atin? Bakit nga ba namatay siya doon? At ganong klase ng kamatayan sa cross? Is it because gusto lang ng Diyos? Or is it because mahal lang tayo ng Panginoon? Yun lang ba yun? No. We should really see where this love is coming from. We're all helpless and hopeless. Wala po tayong pupuntahan kundi impyerno. Wala po tayong kasasadlakan kundi panghabang buhay na kamatayan. And we get to see this scenario. Therefore, pagka nakita natin yung kasadlakan natin at tayo yung sinalba ng Diyos mula sa kanyang biyaya, the response is humility. The response is pursuing God wherever He is, I will go. Hindi natatapos sa salvation lang. Hindi natatapos sa paniniwalang pupunta lang ako sa langit pag namatay ako, tapos na. Kundi every day you see the worth, the gravity, the seriousness of what Jesus did on the cross. And that's for my hopelessness and helplessness. Kaya kung wala yung biyaya ng Diyos na yun, saan tayo pupulutin? And this grace of God sustains us every day. Kaya ayaw ni Satanas na masustain tayo. Ayaw ni Satanas na daily we get connected with the grace giver. Ayaw ni Satanas na maalala natin ang kasadlakan na dulot ng kamatayan kay Jesus. Kaya we bring us to the spirit of pride. Kaya ko to. Alam ko to. Kabisado ko na to. May pera ako, may connection ako. But unless we stand on the strength of the Lord and in His mighty power, we cannot overcome the devil. Therefore, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, we need to see these two things. We must know our weakness or weaknesses and we must know God's strength. Kilala mo ba ang sarili mo? Kilala mo ba ang kahinaan mo? Bakit ba ang tao may kahinaan? Yes, dulot ng kasalanan. But you know what? Itong weaknesses natin, itong kahinaan natin, this reminds us to yield on the Lord. This reminds us to depend on the Lord. This reminds us to, po, to pray and seek the Lord. Kaya ang sabi ni Pablo sa 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, For when I am weak, then I am strong. Sa tuwing mahina ako, sa tuwing nakikita ko ang aking kahinan, o ang aking yun nga, pagkakasala, o ang aking mga tendencies to fall away and to run away from the Lord, then I am strong. Why? Because you run to Him. You find refuge in Him. You find strength. In the Lord. Ang awareness ng ating kahinaan will give us dependence on the Lord evermore. Are you aware na may kahinaan po tayo? Are we aware na mahina tayo? And sana itong awareness na ito magdulot sa atin ng pagsandig sa Diyos sa tuwina. Isa po sa hinahangaan ko na evangelist, pastor, na nakagisnan ko na po at uh, siya po ay sumakabilang buhay na rin at the age of 99 and that is Billy Graham. Billy Graham was known as a revivalist, a great preacher. Talagang grabe po yung 
yung breakthrough ng Panginoon sa kanya. He brought revival in America and to other nations around the world. But every time he traveled, meron po siyang tinatawag na ministry team. In 1948, Billy Graham began a series of evangelistic meetings in Modesto, California. At dito po sa Modesto, California, kasama po niya ang tatlong ministry teams. Team mo po niya, si Cliff Barrow, si George Beverly, at si uh, Ed Grady Wilson. Apat po sila sa ministry team. And they kept themselves on guard. Mayroon pong sinulat si Billy Graham sa kanyang autobiography na Just As I Am, Billy Graham. Nakabahagi po dito yung Modesto Manifesto. Modesto because it was written in Modesto, California. And Manifesto, ibig sabihin ito yung covenant among themselves part of the ministry team. Mayroon po silang apat na niresolve sa kanila pong ministry. Number one is to never exaggerate attendance figures at their meetings. Million or hundreds of thousands of people flock sa kanya pong series of crusades in every nation. Pero ang sabi nila, walang exaggeration. No exaggeration of attendance. Figures at the meetings. They guard themselves against lying and deceit. Number two, to take only a fixed salary from their organization. Yung kanila pong allowance, yung kanilang salary ay manggagaling lamang po sa inaprubahan ng kanilang organization. This guards them against financial thievery. Number three, to never, never be alone with a woman other than their wife, mother, daughters. These serve as their guardian over or against sexual sin. And number four, to never criticize fellow members of the clergy. Akalain nyo yun, pastor na sila, pero ang commitment nila, they will not speak anything against their co-pastors. Guard against pride. This inspired me po as, as, I, as I see a man of God na, po, na talagang wow, he lived on what he really preached throughout his life. At hindi lang siya mag-isa. Mayroon siyang accountability team. And this is how we would like din po to impart among our pastors, leaders, and mentors in the church na we operate on this accountability. Na, po, na, na hindi lang tayo magkakasama sa journey at puntahin natin yung, yung destination natin. Kundi sa ating takbuhin, sa ating lakad, You are allowing the person on your right and the person on your left, the person before you and the person behind you to speak over your life. Isang bagay po yung may leader tayo, pero isang matinding bagay po, you allow your leader to speak over your life. And imagine Billy Graham, he was really popular. Ang galing niya. Pero he submitted himself to these, to these pastors or to this ministry team. Mga kapatid, why? Because these are the attacks of the devil. Lies, deception. Na po, yung, yung pagka, pagka gusto sa pera, greed. Yung sexual sin and even pride. Ito ang palaso ni Satanas. Yung pong tatlo, yung pong parang sinasabi natin na power, or girls, or women, or men, or kaya naman yung, yun nga, greed, o money. Parang sasabihin natin minsan, oh, hindi ko kasalanan yan, Wala akong, hindi ako mahina sa babae, o hindi ako mahina sa lalaki, o hindi ako mahina sa pera, 
hindi ako mahina sa ano pa yung isa sa sa power ayun the more we say that the more we get victimized of the fourth sin of the fourth attack what is that pride wag natin sasabihin na o oh, oh nga nagkasala ako pero hindi ako kagaya ng kasalanan na ganun Hindi po tayo malalayo doon sa nakita ng Panginoong Jesus sa templo. That the tax collector praying, Oh Diyos, salamat at hindi ako kagaya ng tax collector na it, uh, ng, ng tao na ito. Na, na ano po, sabi doon, pakasalanan. O oh, ganito, ganyan, di ba? Jesus saw everything by their hearts, by our heart condition. Kaya po hindi natin pa pwedeng sabihin na, Yun. Or kaya, the more we say na, oh, malakas ako dito, okay lang ako sa pera, okay ako sa babae, okay ako sa lalaki, wala ka talaga akong problema. Yun nga po, beware. Dahil the more we say that, the more we get guilty of the sin of pride. Why? Because we are all weak. We are all frail. No po, doon, tendency po natin, prone po tayo. to falling away from God. Therefore, we must know the Lord's strength. We must know the Lord's strength. Sabi doon, when I am weak, then I am strong. Why? Because I yield on the Lord. I yield on God in His strength. Makita po natin ang kalakasan ng Panginoon. His power. He spoke the heavens and earth into existence out of nothing. Alam niyo po yung sinasabi, didiscribe po sa Panginoong Yesus, yung humihinga lang po siya, nag inhale tapos pag nag-exhale ang Panginoon, lumalabas mga stars. When he, when he exhale, pagka huminga ang Diyos, ang labas nun, between. When He speaks, from nothingness, life comes in. You see how he delivered the people of Israel no po, from Egypt. You see how he provided food for them for 40 years in the wilderness. Indeed, nothing is too difficult for God. Nothing is too difficult for him. Where do you yield in times of need? Who do you call when you are in need? Kanino ka tumatawag? Saan ka sumasandig sa panahon ng pangangailangan? May we see the power of the Lord in our weakness. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. And what? And he's safe. Bakit ba tayo lumalapit sa tao? Bakit ba tayo naghahanap ng tulong? Bakit ba tayo naghahanap ng connection? Di ba we wanna be saved? Para gusto na natin makalampas sa mga mga load and the burdens ng buhay. Pero saan ka nga ba tumatakbo? At sino tinatakbuhan mo? Pero sabi dito, sana tumakbo tayo. The righteous runs unto the Lord. Takbo ka sa Kanya. And He is your mighty fortress and you're gonna be safe and you will be saved in his arms to be strong in the lord we need to know his strength amen and see his great deliverance in your life purihin ang panginoon and then sabi dito ni paul then put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil gusto ko po mapansin niyo po dito Yung word na stand. Yung word na stand po dito ay ilang beses po binanggit. I think apat na beses. Dalawang klase po ng stand. Sabi doon, pagka ikaw ay nagpalakas sa Diyos at tinignan mo ang kalakasan ng Diyos sa kanyang kapangyarihan, tumayo ka. Stand. Bakit nga po ba stand? Eh, syempre nga naman, di ba? Pagka nanonood tayo ng boxing, paano nga ba natin masasabi na 
na panalo na yung isang isang boxer. Diba kapag ka na-knockdown, yung kalaban, or na-knockout. Lupaypay, subsob, talunan. Sabi dito, stand firm and stand with. You stand firm kapag ka ikaw ay nakarelate sa Diyos. When you have relationship with God, and you know that God is your strength and your Savior and everything in you, makakatayo ka. At hindi ka lang tatayo, sabi doon, you will stand firm. Matibay. And then, you stand with. Hindi ka lang tatayo para sa sarili mo at magpapagpag ng alikabok o ng lupa dahil nadapa ka. Tumayo ka, ika ni Paul, tumayo ka ng matibay at tumayo kang may kalasag. Again, Paul is reminding us, yes, it's possible to stand, but again, you stand with the whole armor of God. Is, i, i, pinapaulit-ulit niya po ito, pagka yung tumayo daw po tayong matibay, you are being built in the inner man no, with the strength of the Lord. At pagka sinabi mo, you stand with this armor of God, you can resist the flaming arrows of the devil. Stand firm and stand with. There is one incident in, on the Old Testament. Meron pong limang mighty men si David. Ipapakilala ko po sa inyo yung isa. Siya po si Shama. Si Shama po sa Psalm 23:11 to 12. And the Philistines were gathered into a troop where there was a plot of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he took his stand. Naiwan po siya eh. Naiwan po si Shama sa gera, but he took his stand in the midst of the plot, defended it, and struck the Philistines. And the Lord brought about a great victory. Merong isa silang magandang field doon. At nung parating ng mga Filisteo, idiwan siya ng mga kawal. But you know what? Shama stood his ground. Shama stood by his conviction. Shama stood for the king. Shama stood for the people. Shama stood his ground. And he defended it. Tinalo po niya yung mga pinisteo. And who brought the victory? It's God. Why? Because he found his strength in the Lord and he took the strength and the mighty power of God. Mga kapatid, we cannot be passive. Kung meron pong paulit-ulit na, na word dito na binabagit si Pastor Al in the book of Genesis, it's the characteristic of Jacob being passive. Right? Yung ano po yun, tinatanggap na lang kung ano ang, like, no, sabi ni Rebecca sa kanya, ng mami Rebecca niya, takbo, layas ka na, dali, save your life. Kasi, papatayin ka ng kapatid mo. Ano pong ginawa niya? Instead na mag-sorry siya, Tumakas. That's passiveness. Nung na-in love na siya, na-in love siya kay Rachel, pinagtrabahuhan niya ng pitong taon. <laughs> Tapos ano pong ginawa ni Laban? Didisive siya. Pinigay si Lea sa kanya. Ano sabi doon? Pagtrabahuhan niyo po muna. Anong ginawa niya? Nagtrabaho siya. <laughs> Passive. Tatanggapin na lang niya kung ano yung kapalaran niya. Parang ganun. Nung aalis na siya, he wanted to, to be independent from Laban, his father-in-law. Ang sabi po sa kanya ng, ng tatay-in-law niya, eh, hindi muna. Dito muna kayo. Maglinker muna kayo. Please, stay for a while. Ayusin muna natin ang ating business partnership bago kayo umalis. Ano pong ginawa ni Jacob? Passive. He stayed. Tumanda na po si Jacob ng ganon. Tumanda na po siya nang wala po siyang pinagdidesisyonan, pinaglalaban sa kanyang sarili at para sa kanyang pamilya. But one day, he wrestled with God. At ang sabi niya, hindi na ako magiging passive. Please, huwag kang alis. Huwag mo akong iwanan. Huwag mo akong iwanan ng ganito. 
Huwag mo akong iwanan na talunan. Huwag mo akong iwanan na lito. Huwag mo akong iwanan na mahina. Please bless me. And there was Jacob. He reactivated the faith that God has blessed Abraham and Isaac with. And lo and behold, when he found his strength in the Lord, diba, naging, naging ano na po siya, uh, limping, that's the picture. Even though I am weak, even though I am limping, I still believe, I know, this is the touch of God, this is how God showed me, okay na ako, kahit na ano nangyari sa buhay ko, kahit na anong pinagdaanan ko, It doesn't matter anymore. What matters is, God is with me. I know where I am heading now. Right? And then, siguro bumabalik din talaga yung kahinaan niya kasi nagpalaki siya ng anak at nakita po natin ang mga krisis ng buhay po nila. Jacob had a tendency to become passive. And this is not we should be today. We should always be active and initiate to daily and be intentional walking with the Lord in the strength of God. Bakit? Pinapanood tayo ni Satanas. Kapag ka mahina ka, wala kang ginagawa, nakatulala lang tayo. We walk through the motion, we walk in the park in following Jesus. Isang pitik lang po sa atin ni Satanas, bagsak tayo. We cannot say, let go and let God. Hayaan mo na nga. Nandiyan naman si God. Madalas ko pong sabihin yan. <laughs> Madalas ko pong sabihin yan when I am helpless, when I am hopeless. Ang dami-daming tao na dapat kausapin, ang daming tao, ang daming okasyon na dapat ayusin. Pero I'm tired, I'm sick, I'm hopeless, I'm helpless. And I used to say, bahala ka na Lord. Bahala ka na. And that's being passive. What should we do? We need to do when we see things not happening according to the will of God. Stand firm and stand with, so that you can advance the work of God. Colossians 1.29, Sabi ni Paul, for this purpose also I labor. Striving according to His power, which mightily works within me. Lagi sila sabi ni Paul, pagka nagpapastor siya, sabi niya sa mga taga-kolosas, sabi niya, alam niyo, ang itsura ko, habang pinagpapastoran ko kayo, ang itsura ko, para akong nanay na nagle-labor. <laughs> At napakahirap po noon. Sa tuwing ginagabayan ko kayo sa katuwiran, para akong nanay na nagle-labor. Alam niyo daw po yung labor pains na yan, ay walang kasing tulad na labor. <laughs> ay, labor, sakit. Alam niyo yun, pare-pareho po tayo. May sakit sa gipit, sakit sa ulo, di ba, yung mga sakit sa tiyan, everything. Pero yung sakit ng labor, hindi ko alam bakit nasabi ni Paul yun, hindi na ba siya ng anak? No? Pero bakit nga ba? Ibig lang sabihin po nito, there is this pain na hindi mo makokontain hanggat hindi mo maipanganak. And that is releasing life, releasing the power, the move of the Lord. How do you feel when you go to the life group? Ano nararamdaman mo? Kapag ka, nananalangin ka in behalf of other people, do you labor with them? Do you bear them in your heart, in your womb, in the inner man, in your inner self? Lord, hindi ako titigil hanggat hindi po nangyayari ito para sa aking kapatid. Do you labor with them? And this is how Paul puts his mighty work, the mighty work of God in his life. Alam na po natin yung armor of God. Binasa po natin from head to toes. Mayroon po tayong baluti ng Panginoon. Sabi po nila, maaaring kaya daw po ito na isulat ni Paul, kailangan magkaroon ka ng helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, 
breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, and the sandals of God's peace. Bakit nga ba daw may ganon? Ah, kasi daw si Paul ay nakulong. So, nung nakulong siya, kita niya ang itsura ng mga soldiers. At doon niya po na-identify ang pagiging soldier ng kristyano. Pero meron din pong nagsabi na marahil Paul had arrived to his meditation based on Isaiah chapter 11 verse 5. Kung bakit niya matasabi that the full armor of God is Christ. Sabi niya po dito, Righteousness will be the belt about his loins and faithfulness the belt about his waist. It is God's righteousness that be that will be the belt about his loins. Yung righteousness ng Dios ama, ang pinapatungkulan po dito the prophecy over Christ. Yung righteousness na yon ang babalot kay Kristo at ang katapatan na yon ang siyang gagabay sa kanya pong baywang. And then come to Isaiah chapter 59 verse 17. Sabi dito, He put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on His head. Yung pong armor of God ay hindi po uniform. Yung armor of God ay hindi lang inspired ng Roman army or Roman soldiers. The armor of God is Jesus Himself. Therefore, yung sinasabi po sa atin dito in Romans 13 verse 14, sabi ni Paul, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its last. Para may sasabihin mo, ano ba yung itsura ng helmet of salvation? Ano ba yung itsura ng sandals? Ano ba yung itsura ng breastplate? Ang bigat-bigat! Dahil nakatingin tayo saan? Sa bagay, hindi sa pagka persona ni Heso Kristo. And when you put on when you put on Jesus Christ, sabi po doon, take my yoke upon you. Na po, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Put on Jesus Christ. Kanina, sabi doon, be strong in the Lord. Ngayon, ang sinasabi, para makatayo ka at makatayo ka with the armor of God, put on Jesus. Ibihis mo si Jesus. Kapag nilagay mo si Jesus sa buhay mo, would it be heavy? Magiging mabigat ba? He is the belt of truth. He is the breastplate of righteousness. He is the gospel of peace that we stand on. He is the shield of faith. He is the helmet of salvation. He is the sword, the very word of God. He is our full armor. Capable of what? When you have Jesus, what He is able to do upon you and for you is capable of protecting you from every evil. Dalawang klase po ng evil ang binanggit dito. Number one, it's the person of Satan. You stand against and you fight against the devil. At ang pangalawa, you fight against the evil schemes. Or the evil days. Kung wala si Jesus sa buhay natin, kung hindi tayo nagpapalakas kay Jesus, kung hindi natin dinataglay ang kanyang katuwiran, ang kanyang katotohan at ang kanyang kalakasan, yun nga po, we always are defeated or we always feel defeated, we always feel defeated, Press, we always feel anxious. We always feel what? I am rejected. I am abandoned. 
Hindi ako love. Hindi ako worthy. Hindi ako tinatanggap. We always feel weak. At paglalagay po ng armor na ito, ang sinasabi po natin, Jesus, be my armor. Fight for me. Fight for me against this temptation. Fight for me against this trial. Cry out to Him and say to Him, God, deliver me. Ang iyaharap mo, ang, ang, ang ilalagay mo sa harapan mo kapag ka ikaw ay may gabundok na problema. Come, Jesus. Lord, tulungan niyo po ako. Deliver me. And remember, Jesus, He defeated Satan. Do you believe that? Para kakaunti lang. Do you believe that Jesus defeated Satan? Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Woo! Hallelujah! So, kung may nakatalo na kay Satanas, at yun ay si Jesus, ano gagawin mo kay Jesus? How would you take him now? Take him as your Savior. Take Him as your mighty Savior. Kaya dito sabi ni, uh, sa verse 12, we have this enemy. Ang enemy natin hindi yung asawa, hindi yung anak. Ang enemy po natin ay hindi yung mga tao sa paligid natin. Everybody please read with me, this is our enemy. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Apat. Rulers. Ano ibig sabihin po ng rulers? Hindi po yung rulers sa school. Rulers, yung mga tagapamahala. Authorities. Mga makapangyarihan. Cosmic powers, yung mga may magic, yung mga may, <laughs> yung kakaibang kapangyarihan sa dilim. Sabi dito, cosmic powers over this present darkness. Tapos sabi doon, spiritual forces of evil. And today, ang nagpapakita po sa ating evil ngayon, ay yung tinatawag po nating secular culture. Ang evil po natin ngayon ay postmodernism. Ang evil po natin ngayon ay yung uh, discrediting the credibility of the scripture. Ang kalaban natin ngayon is lying, deceit. Hindi mo na alam kung yung nakikita mo sa FB, yun ba talaga yung totoo mong kapatid, kaibigan, or false account? You don't know. Ang kalaban natin ngayon with these evil forces Satan is luring us no po, by the pleasures of this world. Ina-activate po ni Satanas ang taste buds po natin in loving the world, in being with the world. Ang kanya pong mga gamit po sa atin ngayon ay discouragement, depression, anxiety, worry, Marami po sa atin ngayon ang prideful. Masyadong masakit magsalita, mataas, mapagmataas. Selfishness, makasarili, pagmamahal sa pera, lust. Ano ba sa Tagalog yung lust? Ha? Ka kahalayan. And many other traps to lure us away from the Lord. Igat tayo. Stand firm and stand with the righteousness of God. Righteousness of God pa lang, belt of truth pa lang ng Panginoon. The helmet of salvation that's coming from the Lord. Ingat tayo sa lahat ng inihahain niya sa ating hapagkainan. Not only the, the physical food, but the spiritual things. Nakikipag-contest po si Satanas. And this is our enemy today. Know your enemy. Kapatid, let us pause for a while. What is your battle? 
Anong pakikipaglaban mo? Pera? Sa pera? Sa kahalayan? Watching pornographic materials or videos? Keeping obscene TikTok um, views? What do we have? Ingat po tayo with this present darkness. Anong ginagawa po na ito? Kinukulta po niya. The purity of God in our mind. Kinukulta po niya. Pagka po sinabi ko po defilement or pagkulta, parang imagine niyo po ang isang tubig. Isang basong tubig na iinumin niyo na. And when, a, when you're about to drink that fresh water na po coming from your dispenser, water dispenser, and then bigla pong mayroong nalaglag na sabihin po natin, insekto. Ano pong, tingin nyo, iinumin nyo pa po ba o hindi? Kukutsarahin na lang natin, tatagalin natin yung insekto, tapos iinumin nyo na po yung natira. Di ba, we throw it all away. Why? Because we know that the insect would bring any virus or bacteria. Same, pag wala po tayong discernment, wala tayong pagkilala, wala tayong pagtingin sa gawa ng Diyos at sa gawa ni Satanas, mada, ma, madali po tayong mahulog. That's why ang sabi dito, be vigilant in prayer, praying at all times in the Spirit. With all prayer and suppli supplication to that end, keep alert with perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me. Again, sabi po dito, pray at all times where? In the spirit. Question, why do we find it? Why, why do we find prayer boring? Bakit po natin natitignan na ang pananalangin ay boring? Bakit po natin tinitignan na ang pananalangin ay mahirap? Bakit po natin tinitignan na ang panalangin ay pasakit? <laughs> Para yatang sakripisyo. Why? Because we take it by our strength. Kaya ang sabi po dito ni Paul, pray at all times, In the Spirit. In the Spirit. Be strong in the Lord. Pray at all times in the Spirit. Ibig po sabihin ito, manalangin ka sa Spirito. Speaking about the Holy Spirit and speaking about the Spirit. The Spirit in you, the breath of God connects with God. Tatlo po. Halimbawa po ito. Number one is the body, soul, and spirit. So that comprises a person. Body, soul, and spirit. Yun daw pong body ay yung senses. What I see, what I smell, what I taste, what I hear, what I feel. That's the body. The soul is your emotion. How you feel. Kasama na din dito yung mind. Naramdaman ko. I feel rejected. I feel abandoned. I feel deceived. I am happy. I am joyful. Dito daw po yun, yung soul na yan. Coming from your mind. Coming from how you, how you perceive things. Na po. You feel good. You feel bad. You have this uh, parang direction. The will. That's the soul. But the spirit is the aspect where you sense the presence of God. This comprises the total person and this completes the person. Madalas, dito lang po tayo nag operate sa body. That's why when we, when we talk about prayer or let us pray, hirap na hirap ka. Why? Wala akong nakikita. Wala akong naaaboy. Wala akong nararamdaman. Wala akong kasama. Huwag na lang. Nakakapagod. Soul. Sobrang lupaypay. Sobrang gapi ng kasalanan. Sobrang dumi. Sobrang dumi ng isip. Sobrang dumi ng lakad. Sobrang 
Alam mo yon, guilty ka. You feel ashamed. Sa harapan ng Panginoon, wag na lang. Kuminto ka na doon. Body and soul. You need to activate the spirit. The breath of God. Kaya maraming kristyano na nagbubuhay-buhayan na lang. You operate by yourself. This is the spirit. Saan po ito nagaling? When God created Adam, He breathed upon him the breath of life. <sighs> Yan po yun. Therefore, the spirit must govern the soul. The spirit must even govern the body. And through that power, you pray in the spirit. Saan nang gagaling yun? The breath of God. Hindi sa'yo yun. That's God in you. Activating the presence of God. Nakita po natin mga kapatid, hindi lang po kayo ang nahihirapan sa prayer. Kahit ako po, nahihirapan din. So what helped me is this thought. Hindi ako lalapit sa Diyos dahil feel ko lang, gusto ko lang. Parang, sige, parang maganda yata. Hindi ako lalapit kasi, alam ko, may pangangailangan lang ako and I feel so depressed. No. I come to the Lord in the Spirit because I am a spiritual being. And when you begin to pray, you say to the Lord, God, breathe upon me, your Spirit. I want to pray like how you prayed. I want to feel how you feel. I want to see how you see things. Kaya pagka ito na yung nag-activate, sasaklawan na niya yung kaluluwa mo. Kapag ka nag-activate na yung Spirit of God in you, kaya niyang talunin yung anxiety, yung depression. Kapag ka nag-activate na yung Spirit of God in you, whatever you see, nakakadepress, nakakadiscourage, wala na yata akong lulusutan, wala na yata akong tatakbuhan. Because the, the eyes of the Lord is upon you, His heart is on you, then you can pray in the Spirit. And you can be revived because the Lord is with you. His presence, His power, overhauling the soul and the body. Kaya may katugunan ba sa depression? Parang mahina. May katugunan po ba sa depression? May katugunan po ba sa discouragement? May katugunan po ba sa rejection? Sa abandonment? May katugunan po ba ang lahat ng kalaban po natin kaya nating talunin? Amen! Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah! And this would be the last. Why? Why do we need to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power? Why do we need to stand firm and stand with Jesus Himself as the armor of God in us? Why? Verse 19. That words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly. What? Everybody read with me. To proclaim the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. What's the purpose of being strong in the Lord? Not just to overcome the devil, not just to overcome the enemy. But as sabi natin kanina, pinaalalahanan tayo, we are in a daily battle. For what? Not only for our life. We are in a daily battle in advancing the kingdom of God. We are an army of God. We have a kingdom. And that kingdom is the unshakable kingdom of God. Ang sarap maging part ng army na hindi masisira, hindi mawawasak, at pagpakailanman ay nakatayo. Amen? 
ang sarap mapabilang sa kaharian ng Diyos na ang hari ay magpasawalang hanggang mabubuhay. Amen? Ang sarap mapabilang sa isang kaharian na alam mo, the victory is sure. Then, what are we going to do? I am strong in the Lord, in His mighty power. I stand firm, I stand with, so that I can advance His kingdom. Move forward. I raise a hallelujah to Jesus each day. I speak for this word. I preach the gospel. I become missional. When was the last time people got saved through your sharing? When was the last time people got saved through your lives being changed by the Lord? Kailan huli may nagsabi sa inyo, salamat kapatid. Oh, nakita kita kaibigan. Thank you. Your life is an inspiration. Anong sikreto mo? Ang dami mong pagsubok. Bakit nakatayo ka? Bakit nakatayo ka pa rin? Ang dami mong pagsubok. Bakit nakagiti ka pa rin? Ang daming umiwan sa'yo. Pero bakit nagpapatuloy ka? Why? Do they see Jesus? This is an opportunity for us to advance His kingdom. Bakit nga hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin natin kasama ang mga mahal natin sa buhay? Bakit nga hanggang ngayon hanggang nag-a-attend pa lang din tayo? Bakit hanggang ngayon hindi natin ma-resolve ang ating dependence on God? Why? Because we, get, we need to know, hindi or hindi pa natin alam saan nakaangkla ang ating buhay. Kay Jesus pa talaga, do we find strength in the Lord and in His might? That's why the kingdom of God is not advancing or we're always defeated and we feel defeated. Kasi, una, hindi natin alam ang galawan ni Satanas at ng mga demonyo. Pangalawa, hindi rin po tayo nagpapa-equip. Hindi po tayo nagpapasanay. Akala natin, Kapag ka nag-active ka sa church to become a life group leader, gagamitin ka ng church para dumami ang membro ng church. No! Why we are inviting you to become a life group leader? Because this is who you are. You are an army of God. You have a mission. You are called to advance His kingdom. And that kingdom is an unshakable kingdom. Meron po isang missionary sa isang jungle ng New Guinea o New Papua New Guinea. Alam niyo po, jungle, tribo po yan. Meron po siyang isinulat sa kanyang kaibigan, mga kaibigan, habang nandun po siya sa kanyang missionary field. Ito po ang sabi niya, man, It is great to be in the thick of the fight, to draw the old devil's heaviest guns, to have him at you with depression and discouragement, slander, disease. Sabi niya, grabe, no? Kakaiba uh, ang pakiramdam nang nandun ka sa pakikipaglaban. Pagka nakita mo na, ang nilalabas ni satanas na mga matitinding mga pag, pagbaril, at uh, pagtira sa atin. Kagaya ng ano, sabi niya, depression, discouragement, slander o paninirang puri, disease o karamdaman. Pero, sabi niya, he doesn't waste time on a lukewarm bunch. Hindi siya nag-spend si satanas, hindi siya naglilinger at hindi siya umiikot-ikot sa mga hindi sigurado ang pagkatawag sa Diyos. Look warm. He hits good and hard when a fellow is hitting him. Si Satanas, matinding gumante, matinding tumira doon sa mga tumitira din sa kanya. You can always measure the weight of your blow by the one you get back. When you're on your back with fever, and at your last ounce of strength. When some of your converts backslide, 
when you learn that your most promising inquirers are only fooling. When your mail gets held up and some don't bother to answer your letters. It, is, it, is that the time to put on mourning? No, sir. Sabi niya. Sabi niya, si Satanas hindi siya tumitira dun sa mga hindi sigurado ang pagsunod sa Diyos. Tumitira si Satanas ng matindi doon sa mga nagpapahirap kay Satanas. Pa, paano siya gumaganti? Sabi nitong missionary. Alam mo yon Obvious. Marami nagbabackslide <laughs> sa church. Marami nagkakasakit. Nawawala ng sigla, lakas sa spirit. May mga inaasahan ka na kasama mo oh, sa nakbayin, pero niloloko ka pala. May mga sinusulatan ka, pero hindi na rin sumasagot sa'yo. Oh, sabi niya. Ito na ba yung panahon para magbukmok? Para gumibap? Sabi niya, no, sir. That's the time to pull out the stops and shout, Hallelujah! The old fellow's getting it in the neck and hitting back. Wow, this missionary is so brave. Hitting inside and outside. Hitting with depression, anxiety. Hitting by blow, blow by blow, sickness. Iniiwan siya ng mga members niya. Niloloko siya ng mga kasama niya sa, sa team. Pwede na bang give up? Sabi niya, no. Kailangan mo magpatuloy at sumigaw ka ng hallelujah. Dahil nahuhuli mo na si Satanas, na itatali mo na siya sa kanyang leeg, leeg at siya'y napapahirapan mo. And this is the last phrase that he said, Heaven is leaning over the battlements and watching. Will he stick with it? Nanonood po ang kalangitan. Wow! This missionary was being hit blow by blow by the enemy. Kaya, nandun po ang mga anghel at nakamasid sa kanya ang buong kalangitan sinasabi sa kanya, mananatili ba ito? As they see who is with us, as they see the unlimited reserves, the boundless resources, as they see the impossibility of failure, how disgusted and sad they must be when we run away. Glory to God! We're not going to run away. We're going to stand. Amen! Amen! Are you running away? Are you running away? We're not going to run away. We're going to stand. Say no to the devil. Resist his temptation. And say to the Lord, Lord, I won't run away. I stand on my ground. I stand firm. I stand with you as my protector. I will be strong in you. I will pray in the Spirit. Lord, you are my victory. You are my strength. Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon ng malakas. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. May I request the praise team to come here on stage with people. And here we go. As we come to the close, closing part of, our, of God's message. Kamusta ka, kapatid? Where are you in the army of God? Where are you in the army of the Lord? Are you still standing? Or are you a fallen army of God? Do you feel weak? Are you discouraged? God is saying to you, be strong, my child. Be strong. 
Be strong in His might. Put on Jesus. His righteousness, His holiness, His power. You need to learn to pray and go back to Him in the Spirit. Breathe. Breathe the, bre the very breath of God. Have you lost your mission? Bakit ka sumasayaw? Bakit ka kumakanta? Bakit ka tumutugtog? Bakit ka naglilead? Have you lost the image of God's kingdom? Renew it. We belong to the army of God, to His kingdom. Are you about to run away from the Lord? Magulat ka, nandito ka sa church? It's all because of His gift. It's all because of His power. He brought you here. See the redemption and the resurrection power of Jesus. And He is coming again soon. Dito nakaangkla ang ating mission. Mga kapatid, right now, as the music play, and as we linger upon Jesus, we will call upon Jesus today. And whatever you want to say to Him, just respond to Him prayerfully. If you are saying to the Lord, you're calling to Him, Jesus, 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 be my Savior. Be my Lord. Itawit mo ako sa kamatayan tungo sa buhay. Itawit mo ako sa takot. Sa kalayaan. Itawit mo ako sa pangungulila tungo sa isang bagong buhay. Sa isang buhay na masaya at masigla. Panginoong Jesus, iligtas mo ako sa aking kasalanan, sa aking kahinaan. I want your strength. If this is your prayer, I want you to stand up wherever you are, just quietly. You're saying to the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, I'm calling to you. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Kung ikaw to, just wherever you are, tayo ka lang. Salamat sa Panginoon. Thank you. God sees you. Purihin ang Panginoon. If you are saying to the Lord, tumatawag ka sa Kanya, Panginoong Jesus, Panginoong Jesus, Lord, napakahina ako po. Lugbok ako ngayon. Lugbok ako ngayon. I wanna be strengthened by you. I am depressed. I am discouraged. I am lost. Lord, be my light. Jesus, be my healer. If this is your prayer, just stand up wherever you are. God sees you. God sees you. And He's healing you from within you. And you are saying to the Lord Jesus, I want to get rid of my flesh. I want to get rid of my own emotion. And Jesus, I want to be a spiritual being. Lord, gusto ko maka-discern. Gusto ko makalakad ng diretso kasama ka powerfully, Lord, breathing life that you've given me. Please stand up wherever you are. If you are calling to Jesus and you're saying to Him, Jesus, I lost my mission. Akala ko papaparami lang to ng church. Lord, ang dami kong takot. Kasi... Hindi ko alam paano mag-lead. Hindi ko alam paano mag-serve. I lost my purpose. I lost my mission. Jesus, I want to go back. I want to see the unshakable kingdom. And I want to advance your kingdom. If this is your prayer, you can stand up wherever you are. And you're saying to the Lord, Lord, I want to be part of your army. I want to be part of your army. And today you're saying, Jesus... I'm calling you. Takot ako sa demonyo eh. Takot ako sa mga tira niya. Pero I'm calling you now. Please be my shield. And I will rise up strong. I will rise 
sa brave and courageous. Hindi ako matatakot kay Satanas kasi ikaw ang tumalo sa kanya. If you want this power, please stand up wherever you are and call upon Him. Call upon Him, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you cannot pray, if you, if you find prayer boring, if you find prayer difficult, you want to be a woman and a man of prayer, a man in the Spirit praying to Jesus, Lord, raise me up. I want to pray in the Spirit beginning today. Stand up wherever you are. Gusto ko makapanalangin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And right now, if you are saying, Jesus, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, but I want to say, Lord, today, Jesus, you are also my King. Ikaw ang hari ng buhay ko. Lead me wherever you may lead me. If this is your prayer, you're saying, Jesus, be my King. Please stand up wherever you are. Call upon Jesus. Call upon Jesus. Let us lift both hands to the Lord and let us sing this song. Praise Him. Please help me sing this song. Jesus, say Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Hallelujah. Speak Jesus. Yes, speak Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Till every dark condition starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Oh, we speak Jesus, our Savior, our God, our Deliverer. Your name is power. Let's lift our hands to Your the Lord. Your name 